Till now we have obtained three conclusions related to the linearity of the system and the third conclusion we obtained in the last lecture. According to the third conclusion, if any added or subtracted term other than input and output is available in the system relationship, then the system will be non-linear. There are few more conclusions, one we will obtain in this lecture and the rest we will obtain in the coming lectures and by using these conclusions we can directly comment about the linearity of the system. You can directly have your answer out of four options. There is no need to check the law of additivity and the law of homogeneity. Now I will take one example and we will try to find out if the system is linear or non-linear using the three conclusions which we have already seen. So let's take one example. In this example, output yt is equal to 3 log t minus sin t multiplied to x t square. This is the system relationship and we already know according to our convention yt is going to be the output of the system. It is always the representation of the output and xt xt is the representation for the input. So xt is the input to our system and the system is producing a output yt which is equal to 3 log t minus sin t multiplied to xt square and we need to find out if the system is linear or non-linear. We will use the three conclusions we have or you can say we will use the properties of linear and non-linear systems. According to the first property, the system linearity is independent of time scaling. So if you perform time scaling, the system is going to be linear. In this case, you can see there is time scaling. T square is there. This means there is time scaling. And as there is time scaling, there will be no effect on the linearity of the system. The system is going to be linear. So for x t square, we have linear as the result. Now, according to property number two, system linearity is independent of coefficient used in the system relationship. So let's find out what are the coefficients in our system relationship. The first coefficient is here, one multiplied to the y t, which is definitely not gonna affect the linearity of the system. The second coefficient we have is here sine t and it will also not affect the linearity of the system. So because of coefficients there will be no effect on the linearity system will be linear. Now according to the third property if any added or subtracted term other than the input and output is available in the system relationship then the system will be non-linear. So in this case, we have this added term 3 log t. This is our added term. It is time dependent, but there is no effect of dependency on time. Whenever you have any added or subtracted term, the system will be non-linear. But there is one important thing you need to care about. It is written other than input and output. So here we have the input term. Here we have the output term. But this 3 log t is not belonging to input or output. Therefore, this is our added or subtracted term and this will make the system non-linear. Now the overall linearity will not depend upon the linear result we have obtained due to time scaling and linear result we have obtained due to coefficient used as we have non-linear due to this added term. So the system is going to be non-linear and this is our answer. So I hope you now understand how to use the properties or conclusions which we have obtained till now. Now in this lecture we are going to obtain another conclusion and for this I will take the eighth problem. If you remember the last lecture I gave you two homework problems and in the second homework problem the problem was like this yt equal to xt minus 1 plus xt plus 1. We will solve this problem in this lecture and to check whether the system is linear or non-linear we will first check the law of additivity. So we will first check the law of additivity and uh, for this I will take one input x1t I will feed it to our system producing this relationship and let's see 
output is y1t for x1t. Now what will be the value of y1t? For this we should know the functionality of the system. The functionality of the system is very easy. We already know xt is the input to the system and yt is the output of the system. Now this system is making yt equal to xt minus 1 plus xt plus 1. So it is causing a time delay here and it is causing a time advance here. Because of this we will have xt minus 1 plus xt plus 1. So it is causing a time delay by one unit and it is causing a time advance by one unit and it is adding the two results. So this is the functionality of the system and we will follow the same functionality to have y1t. Instead of xt as our input, we have x1t as our input. So y1t will be x1t minus 1, the time delay value of x1t plus x1t plus 1, the time delay value of signal x1t. In both the terms, you can see the amount by which we are performing the delay and the advance is 1 unit. So we are done with x1t. Now we will take another input x2t. We will feed it to our system. y2t is the output and it will be equal to x2 t minus 1 plus x2 t plus 1. Now we will add y1t and y2t and it will give us a result which is simply addition of these two results. So we have x1 t minus 1 plus x2 t minus 1 plus x1 t plus 1 plus x2 t plus 1. This is what we have. Now instead of adding y1t and y2t, we will add x1t and x2t. x1t plus x2t. Now we will feed it to our system and according to functionality of the system, it will produce a delay and advance by one unit to the given input and it will also add them. In this case, the input is x1t plus x2t and let's say the output of the system is y dash t and it will be equal to x1 t minus 1 plus x2 t minus 1 the time delay plus x1 t plus 1 plus x2 t plus 1. So this is what we have after feeding x1 t plus x2 t to our system and now if you compare the two results you will find they are same. The two results are same. So we can see that the system is following the law of additivity and if you check the law of homogeneity, the second law, the law of homogeneity, then you will find it also satisfies the law of homogeneity. So let's quickly check the law of homogeneity. Xt is the input to our system and for this input yt is the output. Now we will multiply a constant k to the output. It will give us k times yt and yt is equal to xt minus 1 plus xt plus 1. So k time yt, k time yt will be equal to k inside the bracket xt minus 1 plus xt plus 1. This is what we have. Now we multiply the same constant to the input. So after multiplying we have k x t. Now we will feed it to our system and according to the functionality of the system we already know it will produce delay and advance by one unit and it will also add them. Here input is k times x t. There is no term of time in k so you don't have to worry about k. There is t in x t and it will produce delay and advance to x t only and it will add them. So we have k x t minus 1 the delay plus k x t plus 1 the advance. We can take out this k as common term. So we are left with x t minus 1 plus x t plus 1. Now if you compare the two results you will find they are same. 
so it is also following the law of homogeneity and as it is following both law of additivity and law of homogeneity it will also follow the principle of superposition and as the system is satisfying the principle of superposition the system will be linear system now let's take our ninth problem in the ninth problem y t is equal to x t minus 2 plus x t minus 1 plus x t minus x t plus 1 minus x t plus 2 this is what we have as the system relationship now there is no need to check the law of additivity and the law of homogeneity because this particular system will follow both law of additivity and law of homogeneity and therefore the system is a linear system so we have obtained our fourth conclusion i will repeat the conclusion obtained from the eighth problem if output is summation of time shifted terms of input then system will be linear you can see in this case the output is summation of summation of time shifted terms either right shift or the left shift the system is going to be linear in this case also you can see y t is equal to x t minus 2 the time shifted term of input x t plus 1 again time shifted term of input x t this is also time shifted term you can consider it as x t minus 0 then minus x t plus 1 time shifted term x t plus 2 time shifted term so the output is summation of time shifted terms and therefore it is linear system so this is all for this lecture there is no homework problem for you in this lecture and in the next lecture we will deal with the systems having the functionality of integrator so this is all see you in the next one